Researchers from Karlsruhe Institute of Technology have created solar glasses. To which I was like, cool. The solar glasses have semi-transparent organic solar cells on their lenses that supply electric power to a microprocessor, two displays, and electronics in the temples. To which I was like, on my face. Exploding phones made me squeamish every time I slid my smartphone back into my pocket. I figured, like, at worst, what, like a few skin grafts and like maybe a better chance at a thigh gap? But electronics on the face? I just, I just don't know. Unlike silicon solar cells, organic cells are flexible, transparent, and lightweight. They can be made in many shapes, sizes, and colors, so the team made a set of semi-transparent cells that were placed on the lenses. The lenses wound up about 1.6 millimeters thick and weighed six grams, which is on par with your typical pair of sunglasses. The glasses generate about 400 milliwatts of electric power, so you could plug them into your hearing aid or pedometer, but they weren't really meant to serve much more than as a case study. The tech might be a bit more applicable in an all glass office building, or maybe on like those smart windows for the balloon pods. Anything, as long as they're not powering electronics on my temples. I mean, I wonder if anyone's actually tried these on, or if they're just like, hey, we made some sunglasses. Let's just put them on the cube and see if they charge anything. Keep them away from our faces. Fine. No, these are pretty dope. A little hot though. Ah! Oh, they're working. Surgeons use flexible endoscopes to perform procedures on difficult to reach parts of the body. So when my appendix tried to kill me in February, they were able to just snake right in there and lop it off before it oozed its dirty poison inside of me. Flexible endoscopes typically use very rigid surgical tools to manipulate and remove tissue, which reduces a surgeon's dexterity in sensing. While well, Harvard researchers may have developed a solution, a hybrid robotic arm that attaches to endoscopes. The arms have integrated sensing, flexibility, and multiple degrees of freedom. They even have a suction cup inspired by octopus tentacles to more carefully manipulate tissue. The arm was built using manufacturing techniques based on pop-up fabrication and soft lithography. It lies flat on the endoscope until it arrives at the desired spot and then pops up before use. It's a similar pop-up fabrication technique that was used to make Moby, the monolithic bee back in 2011, only Moby used electricity, which wouldn't really work with your tissue. So the surgical arm forms using soft actuators powered by water. In a recent test, the soft pop-up arm was used to work on a pig's stomach as a demonstration. It successfully grabbed and manipulated the tissue before retracting. Like, to a creepy part where it's just like, and then like, just like pinched a little bit of it and I was like moving it around and just like, oh, it's, it's got it, it has got it. The researchers have shown that the device could one day be used in lung and even brain cancer, but next they wanna switch from a slab of stomach to something alive. Man, that is, that poor pig. That little pig. That'll do. Oh, they're working. A few weeks ago, we witnessed Hyperloop One's phase one test. They called it their Kitty Hawk moment. Well, yesterday, only about a month and a half after their initial test, the company's phase two blew their previous results out of the water. After the initial test, the company upgraded from a test sled to the XP1, the company's first generation pod. On the 500 meter dev loop test track in the Nevada desert, the XP-1 accelerated for 300 meters, reached 3,151 horsepower, and topped out at 192 miles an hour. Less than two months ago, the team was falling out of their chairs when they nearly hit 70 miles an hour after accelerating for 30 meters and achieving 891 horsepower. But I mean, it was like the first time they'd ever done it, so. They probably should have been excited. During this test, the pod actually glided above the track using magnetic levitation. And it just, it just looks and sounds so cool. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, let's just hear it again. Let's just hear it again. Oh man, that's so good. No, 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 no. Just one more time. Just one more time. Let's hear it again. According to the company, the test was conducted in a tube depressurized down to the equivalent of air at 200,000 feet above sea level. 
All system components were successfully tested as well. The team is now at about a third of the average speed, or 600 miles an hour, laid out in Elon Musk's Hyperloop Alpha white paper from August 2013, which details a system that would top out at 760 miles per hour. The company is projecting to have three production systems in service in transporting human and cargo pods by 2021. I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design.